Hi, good morning everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I welcome you to this INI CET recall session of the May 2025 anesthesia questions. And just like there is a cycle from last three INI CETs, we were seeing a lot of questions in anesthesia. This time there were only two and both of them were very expected questions. Both of them were questions that we have read in our classes. That is commonly what we discuss. And I feel very happy when they ask core anesthesia questions to you uh, because uh, that is what we target to study in a subject like anesthesia over a course of two days. And that is how it makes a huge impact. And these are all very doable and a sure shot correct answers, especially in an exam with high stakes like INICT where the margin of error is very low. So I welcome you all to this anesthesia recall session and Let's begin with the first question. So first question was which of the following can be used for the reversal of vecuronium blockade in a cardiac patient. Now I know most of you wanted to see the word Sugamadex because that is something that we have discussed a lot uh, that Sugamadex will be asked because it recently got approved. But that is how uh, you know INI people are. They play googly with us. So they knew you are going to be looking for Sugamadex. So they did not give Sugamadex only for you to realize that what we have been using and what we have been reading since years is what is asked in the exam, which is neostigmine. Now, why is neostigmine such a good drug for the reversal of neuromuscular block, especially in NDMRs, especially in NDMRs? Why? Because we know the mechanism of action of NDMRs and NDMRs are non-depolarizing muscle relaxants which are competitive antagonist at nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in post-junctional muscle membrane. What are they? Competitive antagonist. So for the muscle relaxant to act, they need to go fight with the molecules of acetylcholine, replace the molecules of acetylcholine, come and sit on the receptor and do nothing. So if you want reversal of a drug that is a competitive antagonist at the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, the best way to do that is to increase the amount of acetylcholine. Now, how can we increase the amount of acetylcholine? Can we fill it in, in an injection and give it to the patient? No. Sadly, we don't have acetylcholine available. But we can still increase the acetylcholine concentration at NMJ by simply decreasing its metabolism. And which are the drugs that decrease metabolism? So the metabolism is by an enzyme called as acetylcholine esterase. So if you inhibit the choline esterase, then what will happen? It will increase the acetylcholine concentration at the NMJ. What will it do? Increase the acetylcholine concentration at NMJ. All right. But there is a caveat. We know choline esterase inhibitors are non-specific. That means they will increase acetylcholine concentration in the entire body. And we know we have two types of acetylcholine receptors, nicotinic and muscarinic. Now, when there is stimulation and there is nicotinic acetylcholine release, then the muscle starts to contract. But what if it increases on the muscarinic receptors. Now, muscarinic are in your parasympathetic nervous system and muscarinic acetylcholine receptor activation will cause, it will cause all the things that you see in organophosphorus poisoning. So, if you start, you will get lacrimation, nasal stuffiness, you will get a lot of salivation, you will get bronchospasm, your heart rate will go down, bradycardia, there will be colic, there will be urinary retention, there will be defecation. So all the things that you see in opioid, uh, sorry, OP poisoning, right? So tell me, would you ever use this drug neostigmine alone on the patient? What will happen? The patient will start moving muscle, but will have a lot of complication of muscarinic effects. So you always combine it with an anticholinergic and this anticholinergic actually decreases your muscarinic side effects. It decreases your muscarinic side effects, 
right? And this we prefer glycopyrrolate over atropine. We prefer glycopyrrolate over atropine. Why? Because glycopyrrolate doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. So it is always better to use something with no CNS effects. So the correct answer to this question was neostigmine and not atropine. Because atropine actually doesn't cause or any take part in the reversal of neuromuscular block. But it is definitely something which decreases the side effect of the drug that you are using for reversal. And we know dandrolin and baclofen, they are both muscle relaxants. Dandrolin is a skeletal muscle relaxant which actually does the function of rhinodin and that is why it is considered as treatment of choice for malignant hyperthermia. Alright. And baclofen is a centrally acting muscle relaxant. So, very easy question, very doable. We discussed the topic. Now comes what will we do when there is a, what will we do when there is a question on Sugama Dex. So, that is the lateralization of the topic that we are doing today, Sugama Dex. Now, this is a newer reversal agent which is only for Weck and Rock. And it is a very specific reversal agent only for VEC and ROC. And it causes instant reversal. So it's a cyclodextrin molecule that causes instant reversal. So we can expect a question on Sugamadex in your upcoming NEET exam. Why? Because this got its approval last year. Okay. Now this is the recall that I got. This is the recall that I got. And this recall is for benzodiazepine and barbiturates and I'm not really sure if all the options that have been recalled are exactly the same but yeah this is the gist and this is something again which is a repeat of what has been already asked in last year in INI regarding thiopentone but this time the question was that if there is a benzodiazepine and barbiturate then what is true so they both act on GABA cause additive sedation with alcohol thiopentone has a short action due to metabolism and flumazenil is an antidote for barbiturate. Flumazenil is an antidote for barbiturate. All right. Flumazenil is an antidote for barbiturate. Now the options were both A and B are correct. Only A is correct. Only C is correct. All are correct. So tell me, are all correct? Do, do they act on GABA? Yes. We divide the IV induction agents into GABA agonist, NMDA antagonist and we have only one NMDA antagonist which is ketamine. Only one NMDA antagonist that is ketamine. So all the other drugs they act on GABA. Now GABA A, GABA B doesn't matter. They act on GABA. So benzodiazepines act by increasing the frequency of opening while barbiturates act by increasing the duration of opening. So is this correct? Yes. True. Cause additive sedation with alcohol. Now this is something that we have already discussed in MAC. And we know in MAC, in factors affecting MAC, we know alcohol, acute alcoholism decreases your requirement of anesthetic agent. Why? Because alcohol is a CNS depressant. So will it, you will have more sedation of benzodiazepine with alcohol? Definitely. Thiopentone has a short duration of action due to metabolism. Now, in most of the time, the metabolism is dependent on it is decide, it is the deciding factor for duration of action, isn't it? But is it true for thiopentone? No, because thiopentone is actually a lipid soluble drug. Thiopentone has high lipid solubility. Because of that, it should have a very long duration of action. But when you give it in a single dose, when you give it in a single dose, then it has a very short on of uh, duration of action because of redistribution because of redistribution because of redistribution all right so this is false and we know flumazenil is an antidote for benzodiazepine so even this is false so the correct answer is a the correct answer is a only a and b are correct right so this is what i could recall in your INI CET, May 2025, I hope your preparation is on track and I hope that you guys do well. My best wishes are with you. Keep preparing. 
keep working hard for your need and i will see you soon on the other side